What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of High Mythology, the show where we get higher than the Venezuelan rainbow horse soaring through the clouds and tell you guys silly stories from mythology, folklore, and fairy tales. Tonight, we are bringing you some Latin American fairy tales with the story of the Bear Prince. Roar. We got with us tonight, again, special guest, still Jeff, from the uh, Chewed Up and Spit Out podcast and everything Howley Boys. Hey, so Jeff here. Thank you for inviting me tonight. <laughs> Both Dusty, you, Kim, and you guys are killing it these days. Oh, thank you. This shit Very cracks cute. me the fuck up, and I'm glad to be here right now. Woo! Thank you. Let's, let's hope this one gets you, too. This one's a pretty funny yeah, one. Yeah, I me. think we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, we're trying it um, with the voice style again. Hope you folks liked it because we're coming at you with it and it's going to be mm-hmm. fun and funny. So it's what it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dig your feet in. All right, so let's, uh, let's first get out of the way that this story has over 50 different versions. And the oldest version is that of the story of Cupid and Psyche. But when you add that story, it becomes. A little over 150 different versions. Jeez. Multiplier. I oh, know, right? So, on to the story. Today's comes from Venezuela. Or no, no. It comes from Mexico. I'm sorry. Mexico. When uh, Catholicism took over as its main religion. So, this is the story of the Bear Prince. Once upon a time, there was a poor woodcutter named Pablo Escobar. And he had three beautiful daughters, Lucinda, Maria, and Sofia. And the youngest of the three sisters, Sophia, was the most beautiful of all the sisters, as it usually goes. You know what I mean? Every story, you know what I mean? (laughs) There's always one sister. It's like, there's a smart sister, and then it's another sister, and then there's the fucking hot sister. Yeah, the most beautiful (laughs) sister, third line. Yeah, I married the hot sister. (laughs) One day. Sorry, Jen, didn't mean to offend you there. I'm, I'm I'm not casting any shade. (laughs) One day, Pablo went to the forest and found a good oak tree to chop down. He began to chop at it. Bang! 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 And suddenly, a very large and terrifying bear grabbed Pablo's axe from his hands and growls at Pablo and says, Who the hell gave you permission to cut from my forest? (laughs) You've been caught stealing my timber, and now you will pay for it with your life. Now don't you fucking tread on me. So the bear is obviously from Texas, came down to Mexico. (laughs) I don't know. The story shall progress. We shall see. (laughs) (laughs) Pablo falls to his knees and begs the bear. Please forgive me, Senor Oso. I was only cutting the wood to sell it so that I can support my three niñas. If you kill me, you are also killing them, for they will starve. Okay, so that's definitely West Texas. (laughs) And see. some El Paso. <laughs> see. Oh, shit. Some shitty places. Okay. Uh, so the bear remains silent and in thought. Uh, he remains silent and thought. Taking, into, uh, taking in what the woodcutter had told him, he concluded by telling Pablo. Then there is only one way in which your life can be saved. You must give me one of your daughters in marriage. You sound like King of the Hill. <laughs> now, I lo- now, now, let me tell you something real quick. I get that a lot from people, and it is totally okay. That is a great show. God bless America. Do you sell propane? <laughs> <laughs> and accessories. <laughs> uh, Pablo didn't know what to do or say. Uh, the thought of him dying and his girls in despair forced him to agree to the bear's proposal. Pablo gets up and sadly walks home to tell his daughters what had happened. The two eldest, Lucinda and Maria, said, Uh, Dad, listen, I would fucking rather die than to marry that hairy son of a bitch. Did you hear him talk? Did you (laughs) hear him talk? Bet you he didn't make it past kindergarten. I bet you he's an idiot. (laughs) (laughs) But the youngest daughter, Sophia, said, Father... I will marry the bear. And the next day, Sophia and her father 
went into the forest where <laughs> the bear was waiting the for them. Thank you. When the bear saw the beautiful maiden, he was satisfied. And when Sophia approached the bear, she said, Senor Oso, my mother has taught me that in all things I should always follow God's law. If I must marry you, then I want to be married according to Catholic rites. And the bear agreed, provided that a priest would come to the forest. Pablo left and soon returned with a priest, and the two were married. With everyone, when everyone had left, the bear led Sophia to his cave, and when it grew dark, the bear chanted, why is your sister such a bitch? <laughs> not a chance, but... Bear so hairy. Bear what so What does Pablo alarming. mean in English? <laughs> <laughs> Turn into a prince, handsome and charming. And in an instant, the bear changed into a handsome prince. Poof. He then... Thank you. He then told his wife, Sophia... I'm actually an enchanted prince cursed by a bruja. That's a witch. I was turned into a bear by day and a man by night. You may do anything you wish around here, only on one condition. You must never reveal my secret of being an enchanted prince. And Sophia happily promised her husband that she would never reveal his secret. The next morning, the prince chanted, Prince, so handsome. Prince, so charming. Change into a bear. Hairy and alarming. And in an instant, the prince transformed into a bear. Days followed months, and Sophia felt the need to visit her family in the village. But she did not know how to ask her husband for permission to leave and see them. Finally, after a few days, she was able to muster enough courage to ask and said to him, Uh, fuck. Hang on. Ah, uh, fuck. <laughs> Aside from you, dear husband, I don't have anyone who, with whom I talk to. I wish to go to the village and visit with my father and sisters. It isn't far, and if I leave early enough, I can be back before it gets dark. And the prince did not want Sophia to go, but she insisted so much, just total nagging, that he eventually consented, and however, he made her repeat the oath to never reveal his secret. You must they never always do. Yeah. Was he a bear then or a human? When he asked her, because that's the question. I feel like she could not talk to him at any point, because, I mean, even as a bear, he could talk. So as yeah. a bear, he has a Texan accent, and yeah. as a fucking prince, a human, he has an he, English. Yeah, he speaks perfectly. Nice. I don't know. <laughs> he just I'm speaks perfect like, English. Um, just a combination of a Pablo and Bruja together, it seems like a match made in heaven. You know, this should be like a story on its own somewhere. Pablo and the Bruja? Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. Side story. <laughs> Oh, uh, fuck. Where am I? You guys got me. The next day, Sophia got up early, dressed herself richly, and left to go see her family. When she made it to her father's home, she was welcomed joyously. However, the devil who never sleeps soon fills the sisters with envy, and they begin to poke fun at Sophia, super jelly, at the fact that she was <laughs> wearing rich jewels and costly garments. Bitch, where'd you get all that jewelry, huh? <laughs> Your husband's a bear. He just sits at home and watches fucking videos online and does (laughs) nothing in his cave. Eating some fucking honey. (laughs) No, he's actually he's he's actually got a PhD in fucking psychology. Uh, He just you know as a bear, he kind (laughs) of just likes to sit around and watch NASCAR, (laughs) drink Coors Light, and not shave his chest. Not shave his chest. Wow. The sisters mock her, and the eldest, Lucinda, says, You married that fat fuck? What a shame. And Maria followed in her sister's footsteps, and her and Lucinda continued to make fun of Sophia and make her feel like shit. Bitches be fucking hating. And then they would repeatedly tell Sophia this over and over again until Sophia had had enough and lost her temper. She revealed her husband's secret to them, and the sisters were deeply amazed at her tale. Lucinda says, uh, Look, Sophia, uh, hella jealous over here, just putting that out here. Uh, why don't you disenchant this prince? I mean, uh, what do you even need to do? I mean, it's like super simple. You just get him drunk tonight, put something in his butt while he's asleep, tie him up and gag him. Then as soon as day breaks, the <laughs> prince will wake up and he'll not be able to say the magic rhyme. 
You know, Who the fuck you think you're broken. talking to over here? <laughs> I'm your older sister. I got this. <laughs> you're a Phoebe Butra over there. I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll have a husband who is a human forever, and like I'll totally be able to fuck your husband. Because I'm, like, way hotter than you, and I totally body shame people because I don't even have body shame issues myself. Wow. I'm not fat. Fat head. (laughs) When Sophia returned to the cave that night, she did everything her sister had suggested to her. The prince awoke the next morning and just imagined the look of surprise at finding himself tied Why is there there something in my ass? Well, he was still a prince. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Why is there something in my asshole? (laughs) My anus is throbbing. What have you done to me? He could not say the magical rhyme, and his transformation Uh enchantment was indeed broken. However, (laughs) though... (laughs) Abracadabra is open to me. Abracadabra. Though it was to be a joyous occasion... The prince was super sad and said to his wife, Sophia. Wife, you have broken your promise. And now you must suffer the consequences. To break the curse and live happily ever after. We had to live happily for one year and one day. Since you disobeyed me, we shall have to look for me. Sorry, you will have to look for me. But you will not be able to find me until you locate the castle of faith. Quite ominous. <laughs> After saying this, the prince vanishes, and Sophia is left all alone. She cries and cries, and she was so sorry, for she truly loved the prince. After about 30 minutes of hardballing, she snapped out, her, snapped out of it and was like in a state. Snapped out of her state of... <laughs> <laughs> and became, I, I'm cool. It's all cool. Wow, wow, it's all wow. gravy. <laughs> yeah, and I'm became, still hotter than that bitch Lucinda. So nice. And became determined to be reunited with her husband. She decided to go in search of the castle of faith. She gathers a few of her belongings and puts them in a bag and slings them onto her back and leaves. She walked and walked until she arrived at a forest and met a wizard. And the wizard says to her, "Sophia, what do you want here in this forest?" Sophia says to him, I am looking for the castle of faith. Do you happen to know where it is? The wizard shakes his head and says, I do not know where the castle is located, but follow the road until you've reached my father's house. He is also a wizard and may (laughs) know where your castle is. Take this nut with you. It's a big nut, glorious and full. (laughs) And if you ever find yourself in trouble, break it open and sprinkle it upon your breasts. Wow. Sophia thanked the wizard and left, and the wizard said to his father... Uh, also, beware my father. He's kind of creepy. Somehow I just skipped like three lines. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sophia thanked the wizard and left, and she walked a few miles and came upon a house that the wizard said his father lived. She asked the wizard there if he trailer. knew where the castle of faith was. <laughs> Is that an RV? <laughs> but the old wizard didn't know and says to her... Look here. Walk along this road until you reach the house by my eldest brother. He, too, is also a wizard. And he's traveled much. Perhaps he can tell you where his castle is. I, too, will give you a nut. Oh, yeah, as my son did. If you find yourself in trouble, just break it. Sprinkle it upon your forehead. (laughs) I'll I'll come to help you. Uh, Can I smell your feet? Oh, wow. Sophia. (laughs) Don't mind that. That's my pet bull rock. You said your pet bull rock? Bull rock. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to take a hit of this weed real quick. Yeah, bull rock. We want to smell those (laughs) feet. Sophia thanked the old wizard and left. She walked a few more miles and then finally came to the home of the third wizard. He, too, had no knowledge of its location, but he told her what she should do. He says, Ah, the moon probably knows. Follow me this road, and you will soon come to our house. But be careful. The moon may be angry, and she often is. I will also bust a nut on you. If you find yourself in trouble, break it upon your backside. 
<laughs> Sophia thanked him and left. The poor girl was very tired, and after many more miles of walking, arrived at the moon's house. She knocked on the door, and an old woman answered. She was the, moon, the moon's housekeeper. When she sees Sophia, she says, Merciful God! Dear heavens, child! What are you doing here? Don't you know? If the moon finds you here, she will eat you! Sophia tearfully tells the old woman what has happened. To her, and the old woman says, Look here, right behind the stove in our kitchen, and when the moon comes home, I will carelessly ask where the castle is. At dawn, the moon came home angry because she had pricked her finger on a prickly pear. And the moon came into the kitchen and says, Human flesh, I smell here. Give it to me, or you will be what I feast upon. And the old woman housekeeper swats the air from her face and says, Go on, you're fucking crazy, you old bag. There is a roast in the oven. You think it's human flesh? (laughs) Sit down and eat so that you can go to bed. You're very tired. The moon sat down to eat, and the old woman began to talk. The other day, an owl came by, and I got to talking with her. She told me that she had heard talk about the Castle of Faith. You know who... You who knows many things, surely you know where the castle is. The moon casually says, To tell you the truth, I do not know. The one who would probably... Probably does is the sun. And after the moon finished eating, she went to bed, and the little old lady whispered to Sophia, whispered to Sophia, Quickly, leave before the moon wakes up. Go along this road, and you will soon find the house of the sun. Sophia hugged the old woman, thanked her, and then left quietly. She walked and walked, and finally came upon the house of the sun. She knocked on the door, and an old woman housekeeper answered. When she sees Sophia, she says... Dear Lord, my child, what are you doing here? Don't you know if the sun finds you here, he will burn you? Isn't that how you feel when you're in the sun? Yeah, it's like a ginger in the sun. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) What nothing to do with that? (laughs) (laughs) What if you had to go to the house of the sun? Yeah, (laughs) still Jeff in the house of the sun. I am so fucking burned. (laughs) Yeah, I'd hop a train the other way. Yeah. The biggest Boston hoodie you have ever seen. (laughs) (laughs) Sophia began to cry, and in between her sobs, she told the story to the old woman. They were both gloomily talking when the house uh, suddenly fills with light, and the sun came in. Poor Sophia. She crossed herself and prepared to die, but the little old lady yelled, Wait, son, wait! This poor child is looking for the castle of faith! Tearfully, Sophia told the son her story, and the son smiled at her and says, I know where the castle is! Oh, I'm the son. You're the son. Sorry, wrong voice. (laughs) I know where the castle is, but it is very far from here. I could take you. But it is getting late, and everyone knows I'm not allowed to go out after dark. That would fuck up a bunch of shit. (laughs) I mean, could you even imagine what people are thinking if I show up at the club? Hmm? I'm never... No no one invites the sun to nighttime parties. Still Jeff says... (laughs) Bounty, Intense music. Uh... But look here, a short walk from here on this road will lead you to my good friend's home, the wind. He can take you, and he's a fucking party animal, let me tell you. Just don't mention cocaine. When you get here, there, tell him that it was I who sent you. And also tell him, lay off the cocaine, bro. Sophia thanked him many times and went her way. After a short while, she came upon the wind's house, and she knocked on the door, and the wind screamed. 
<laughs> oh shit! Come in, bro. Uh, whatever it is, I'll do anything. Just like anything. What's going on, bro? What, uh, what are we doing? Uh, what are we up to? Sophia entered and told the wind that the sun had sent her with a request. The wind hastily responds. Oh yeah, no, no, no worries, bro. No worries, no, no worries, chick. I mean, we'll do whatever. I mean, bro, chick, we'll do what, whatever, whatever your pronoun is. I'm totally cool with all the pronouns. I mean, I, I like pronouns. She told the wind all that had happened to her and that she needed to go to the castle of faith. The wind quickly tells her. Oh, oh, bro, Hemoth, don't, don't even worry about it. I mean, I, I mean, there's, there's like some crazy shit that happened to you. There's all kinds of shit back then that happened, and it's happened to you, and it's still kind of happening to you because you're still here, and you're talking to the wind, and it's kind of funny. Because <laughs> you talk to the sun, and you talk to the moon, and you got to talk to the wind, and now I'm here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, fucking, I'll totally take you there. I got a car. Don't worry. I'm totally safe to drive. Why are you <laughs> <laughs> The wind held out his hand, and Sophia took it, and in the wink of an eye, they arrived at the Castle of Faith. The wind says to Sophia... I, hey, hey, check it out. It seems like that, uh, there's a fiesta in the castle over there. We should probably go check out the fiesta. I bet there's going to be lots of things at the fiesta. There's going to be like pork and things and carnitas and probably tacos. Probably gonna, people, people are going to have beers. People are going to be spinning in circles, mariachis. hitting pinatas and mariachis and tons of things like that. There's going to be people. There's going to be things to do. We should, we should totally go. Can we go? Can we go? Can we go? Should we go? Can we go? Can we go? Can we go to the party? Should we go to the party? Are you buying? <laughs> Are you buying? <laughs> yeah. No, it's a BYOB. It's BYOC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but lucky, the wind is always packing. The whole castle was brilliantly lit up, and the sounds of violins and guitars could be heard everywhere. The wind turns to Sophia and says, Woo! I have to leave real quick. Well, but <laughs> but I got some. Uh, I got with the help of God and everything. You'll you'll totally do fine. I got a thing over here that these chicks are gonna do. Uh, we're we're gonna go. We're uh, basically we're gonna go do cocaine and have a bunch of orgy. Do you want to come to the orgy? You can come to the orgy. You should probably should come to the orgy though. Do you want to come to the orgy? You can. You shouldn't though, but you probably should. But can you? Would you? Do you want to? Can you? Would you? No, we're gonna go. Okay, we'll be back. He turned into a worm and flew away. <laughs> And Sophia knocked on the castle door, and a young servant man answered the door and says to Sophia, Hey, uh, well, uh, in what way may I serve you, baby doll? Sophia anxiously tells him, I would like to see the prince. And the servant replies, Signora, you can see him at this time? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, you cannot see him, actually. I was totally <laughs> sorry. I got caught off guard. Uh, do you want my digits? or? Uh... He just got married, though. Uh, he's dancing with his new princess. Uh, yeah. But if you want, I can show you where the <laughs> There's mariachis the playing in the background, bro. Get that. Where's your guitar at? Go get your guitar. <laughs> um, you said so. Actually, that's a yeah. <laughs> that's a pretty cool. We'll song. give it two seconds. Hurry up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break, and uh, right? Is that what we're doing? I guess if you want, we're gonna take a quick break. Break and come back. It sounds like the the right time to like. We can just keep going. He it's just, just got married like a... and is now dancing with this princess. Hold on, we gotta get that fucking awesome background yeah, fucking fiesta music. We yeah. gotta get this going. So we're trying something new right now. Uh, we're going to actually bring in a Spanish guitar for the Spanish mythology. It's better so. than hearing jazz in the background. Yeah, it's better than <laughs> mouth jazz. <laughs> no hate, all the love. Yeah. But your guitar playing is pretty awesome uh -huh. for this It gets part. me chubbed up every time. Maybe you can do another fucking Coyote and Roadrunner saga. <laughs> yeah. Those are fucking awesome. Oh, if you yeah. guys, uh, viewers, listeners, if you guys mm -hmm. have never heard the ballad of Wile E. Coyote, you should definitely check that out. Yeah. I have laughed so fucking hard. It is so good. Yeah. Although Dustin does kind of sound a little Italian in it. But, oh, yeah. I, but I, I sound, he's working like, on I sound thing. like all kinds of different accents. <laughs> you sound like but it's pretty fun. Yeah, it, it is fucking great. It's super great. Mm -hmm. Definitely check that out. Yeah. Like three minutes. Check it out. Yeah. Some say he is a man. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna launch into it. Here. Yeah, don't do it. But, don't go into it. There we go. Here we got a fiesta go. going. Yeah. Sweet. Hit, hit me with some strings real quick, Jeff. At my leisure, I will.
There we go. All right. All right, all right, all right. Back to the story, folks. Uh, do you want to redo what the servant says? Senora. <laughs> Senora. You cannot me, see him at this time. Folks. Thank you so very much for having me on our show tonight. Yeah, 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 for sure. He has just got married and is now dancing with his new lady. But if you want, I'll give you my digits. We could totally also, I'll show you where the window is. We can go watch all the cool wedding night stuff and maybe make out a little bit. No pressure. <laughs> Sophia thought quick for an excuse to enter and said, Well, if that is the case, senor, at least let me come in and see this dance, the baile. I have never witnessed, what can I only imagine, to be a magnificent dance. Oh, please, let me see. And the servant let out a sigh and says to her, I'll totally let you come in uh, under one condition. Um, but you be careful. I'll let the bride see you. And since you have not been invited, uh, the bride will be angry if she sees you. And also, uh, just like, show me your least favorite titty, please. Maybe a BJ. <laughs> Maybe uh, just a quick HJ behind the barn out there. Huh? Sophia <laughs> gave him an HJ right. and entered the castle and saw her <laughs> husband, the prince, eating at a table, surrounded by his guests. Sophia flattened herself against the wall, and from there she began trying to attract the prince's attention. The prince kept on talking with his guests and did not see the poor girl. She was trying so hard to get his attention that the bride saw her, and she was an evil witch who used her magic to blind the prince and made him marry her. The prince then saw Sophia and recognized her immediately. He yelled at the servants trying to, bring, trying to get them to bring Sophia to him. But with the noise, nobody could hear him, and the evil witch screamed at her servants. Run that beggar out! And the servants were about to lay their hands on Sophia when the girl broke one of the magical nuts on her chest that the wizard had given her. In an instant, Sophia transformed into a little mouse, which ran about. And when the witch... When the witch saw this... She turned herself into a fat cat and began to chase the mouse. The mouse sprang on top of the table and onto the prince's plate. There, Sophia broke another nut mouse. on her forehead and transformed into a grain of rice uh -huh. and became lost amongst the many things on no the prince's right. plate. The fat cat then jumped on top of the table and instantly turned into a chicken, which began to peck at the prince's plate of food. Sophia then broke the third magical nut on her back and turned into a coyote, which ate the chicken in one bite. Oh. Sophia then changed back into her human form and was reunited with her husband, the prince, and they both lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> Way to play along with my ad libs, Kim. I like that finish there. Thank uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so our resources are g world.org, The Magic Tales of Mexico. Uh, yeah, good website. Check it out. It's got all kinds of fun stories like this, I believe. Um, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, let us know what you think, also. Uh, you know, fucking around with something new. Um, we may bring the guitar back. May not. You never know Things what happen. the future holds. I got more Latin American stories. Mm -hmm. I could use some good background yeah, music. Some good Spanish guitar. But, uh, yeah. I hope you folks Less like jazz. this. Let us know what you think. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're probably going to keep doing the voices. So, I hope you enjoy it. If you I don't... They don't mention me up here. Yeah, no, yeah, Jeff's still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's no, still we mentioned you before. Yeah. yeah, we're still we're still finishing up. We're not done yet. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. You can talk too with us, Jeff. You know, you're more, oh, yeah. I thought well, one instrument at a time. Yeah, my vocal cords or my fingers. I don't know. Yeah, we got and on the on playing that little good that beautiful guitar music over there is still Jeff from the Chewed Up and Spit Out podcast. Hit us with a little shred session, Jeff.
Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, yeah. Like Kim said, uh, look up the song by uh, Just Dusty and Still Jeff. Uh, white people. Uh, not, uh, also, look up White People Problems. That one's fun. Yeah, that is look up good. our YouTube, Howley Boys, H A O L E B O Y S. We, you will find all of our videos. You'll find the Ballad of Wiley Coyote. You will find white people problems. And soon to come, you will find our new song we're working on, White Guy with Dreads. We also do the Gangster Peace Theater. I am the camera. Yeah, uh, Gangster Peace Theater. Yes, that is also If a you like fun rap one. songs and you like goofy looking white dudes reading them like books, boy, you know really howdy, likes do them? we got something for you. People from Haiti, Haiti really loves fucking us. love them. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. And people from New York, actually, I found. Yeah, New yeah. York and Haiti kind of love us. It's, it's very interesting. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, boost all, right. all of our videos in Haiti, but yeah. Thanks we love again, you. Thanks again, guys. Have a we good night. We love you. Good night. Subscribe, like, Much listen love. again. We're coming back at you one of these days.